In this video I'm going to import Mineways exports in a few different ways and wanted to show you how that works. So you start with this kind of thing, just this empty scene. Uh, you hit delete key or you click the thing, pick it, hit the delete key and so you can import and what you want to do is import Wavefront Obj. This is in Blender 3.5. You don't want to do the legacy one. The, the new Obj reader is a lot better. Just use it. So here's my simple export. And when, when this comes in, it looks pretty boring. So what you want to do is go here, or even better, you go here. And you can see there's some funky things with shadows, but you can also just see the models better. Um, if you go here, you'll notice, gee, the models, there's, you know, there's some, <laughs> there's some weirdness. There's like, gee, there's a part missing here. There's some other thing going on here. Uh, there's some wackiness with this, that, and the other. Uh, if you go here, it's a little bit better as far as shading, but again, there's stuff missing. Um, well, so what's going on is that there's, by default, the importer uh, does the right thing. It wants to import and give you a nice smooth uh, interpolation between uh, various elements and so on. But what you can do is use MC Prep, which uh, there's a whole separate video on how to install MC Prep. It only takes a minute or two to install. Um, but the idea is that you have this MC Prep thing, and what you do is you go pick all your model with MC Prep, and then you can do Prep Materials, and you hit OK, and hey, gee, suddenly things look better. And I'm using the N key, by the way, here to toggle this off and on. It's, it's the easiest way. There's also a tiny little arrow here that you can use, but the N key is just infinitely better. So anyway, now you can see that everything's appeared, and uh, it looks pretty good. Um, and MC Prep does some other kinds of cleanups and so on. Uh, so that's one way you can import. Um, here's another way, in fact, is if you actually use MC Prep. So let's get rid of this guy again. And uh, if I go to MC Prep, you'll notice there's an open mine ways. Well, you can always open my program if you do that. Um, but you can also Obj World Import. So you can just get to that menu very quickly this way. And you can bring in another model. So <clears throat> at this point, let's see, what will happen is uh, we import it, and you'll notice something slightly different here, that all the objects are separated here. Um, they're separated by material. So if I look at the fern, I can look at the fern's material and you know play with it separately. And you could play with the material separately in the other one, but this way you can just kind of click on an object and be able to get to its material quicker. Uh, the downside of this is that if you want to, in MC Prep, uh, actually convert all these. So, you know, you've, you've picked them all and you go, oh gee, they look bad. Yeah, that's bad. I want, I want them to look good. You have to make sure to select them all. And the way that you select them all is to click on one and then go down to the bottom and hold the shift key and click the bottom. And that'll select them all. Anyway, once they're all selected, you can again do prep materials and, you know, it again looks good. And, uh, and so that's, that's nice. Um, so those are two ways to import. A uh, third way to import is, I think, a more interesting way. Uh, let's see, let's, okay, well, let's just do it new. Um, is that you can also import, I'm going to delete again, you can import nowadays um, USD. Under Blender 3.5, the USD models are looking a lot better. Their base, or the, the importer rather, is looking a lot better. So. The good news here is that it imports USDs. The bad news is that it doesn't really pay attention to the transforms set on that USD. Uh, so it's thinking everything is, I don't even know what. I think it's thinking things are just absolutely huge here. Like, I think one in, in Blenderland means like one centimeter, and here it's one means one meter. So it didn't really scale things uh, it, it sort of automatically scaled everything up by a factor of 100. So that's a mistake. So there's two ways you can uh, correct that and the one way is to go into here and I've hit the end key again and I can go into view and I can change the bounds so instead of a thousand meters is my far as I want my camera to look I can go to 10,000 meters um, even if I do that you'll notice that there's this weird Z fighting that's going on that it, it basically uh, I won't explain it but it's called Z fighting you can go look it up um, and, and that looks hideous and along this edge out. So there's this horrible Z fighting stuff. So the way you can get rid of that is just make your clip start some distance away from the eye. Like so, call it 10 meters and suddenly all that goes away and things look a lot more reasonable. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's that. The other thing that's um, 
anyway, let's see. And it, and it can also, by the way, yeah, so the sun's all nice and changed there. Um, but let's see. Uh, yeah, what's the dealio? Okay, yeah, right, right. So one thing you want to do is delete the default light. Um, there is a sun here, and it's kind of interesting because if you now go to this sort of super nice view, uh, it, it, the sun is crazy. So what you want to do is go down here, you pick the sun, and you pick, you know, the next to the bottom one, the little light bulb, and instead of strength, you know, this 500,000 or whatever, uh, you just put strength of 8, and that's fairly reasonable. Um, unfortunately, the thing that happens is you kind of lose all shadows. You might remember with OBJ we had a nice shadow thing going on. Um, and anyway, well, the problem is that, yeah, not good. Uh, and in fact, if, if in OBJ you start to change the light source um, to the sunlight, like so you can pick a point light or a sunlight or whatever, if you pick sun, you'll want to set the strength down to eight or so in that light too. Anyway, long and short is, is that for some reason the shadows have disappeared and I don't like that very much. So I'm going to import a different way. So let's see. So I'm going to delete this object. I'm again going to delete the light because the USD itself actually has lights built into it. So I don't need to do that. Uh, so I don't need to have a built-in light. Um, so I import again, but this time I say scale 0.01. So I'm going to scale it down by a factor of 100. And now you see, aha, it's coming much nicer. And if I switch to here, again, the sun's goofy. So you go to the sun, you fix it. You say 5 instead of 50,000, and it all looks good, and you've got shadows. And they're kind of crummy shadows. So now I'm going to talk about rendering a little bit. Um, one thing you can do is, well, for one, notice, notice there's some nice things going on here. Like there's some actual uh, normal maps going on. Like these things that have bumps. Um, the, basically, I'm using this JGRTX uh, model data for this model. And, what happens with that is you get these nice bumps, you get uh, normals and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's something that the OBJ can't give you. So if you're using a really fancy terrain pack like JGRTX or some of the other ones out there, uh, if you want these bump maps, you're going to pretty much at this point need to use USD. Um, or you're going to have to attach a lot of things by hand, which is no fun at all. Um, another cool thing you'll notice is if I turn off the sun, the, uh, the lava is actually glowing. And, uh, and that happens with the OBJ too, is that um, you know, there will be emission, uh, emission information exported with those and so on. Anyway, long and short is that USD can give you a more full-featured full kind of a model here with all kinds of, uh, you know, nice little extras. Like I, like, I like how these little bolts are all shiny, you know, the, uh, you, know you can see the bumps on, on the train tracks and so on and so forth. Um, anyway, so let's say, let's say I get to here and I say, okay, I want to try to take a view of this thing. Now, the trick is, is to actually render what you do is you've got to set up a render view. And the way you do that is you hold Control, Alt, and then you hit the zero key on your numpad, on your numbers pad. And that brings up this little window that shows you where it's going to actually render. And so like if I hit F12 right now, it actually renders just that little window. I've, this, this Blender render thing is a bit larger than uh, what I'm screen capturing right now, but you get the idea. It's just going to do what's in that window. So if you want to adjust that window, um, it's a little tricky. And I finally found that, for me, what works really well is, for one, I can use the scroll wheel on the mouse to make the window bigger. So there I've got a window that's like, gee, that's just about everything, you know, sort of what you see is what you get. You know, what I, what I see on the screen now is just about what's going to get rendered. So, so that's pretty good. Uh, now the other trick here is that if I hit the N key, uh, then what I can do is go to View, and then I hit this magic button, Camera to View. And if I hit Camera to View, and now I'm going to hit the N key again to toggle that menu off, is Camera to View now does this great thing. It basically says, okay, I, uh, I, you know, what you see is what you get. So as I move my camera around, and change things, you know, to, to whatever. Um, and so here I'm using different controls, by the way. Like I can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. I can also use the control key to give a sort of smoother uh, moving in and out. And it's really, I'm, I'm actually moving, I'm not zooming. I shouldn't, shouldn't confuse the two. Zooming is where you're changing sort of the field of view. Uh, this is more like, I guess, a dolly or something. Anyway, so here I'm, I'm moving in and out, uh, holding the control key and holding the middle mouse button in. 
So that's, that's one way to change the view. The other way to change the view is if I hold the middle mouse button and just rotate, don't hold any keys down, I can rotate. Uh, if I hold shift, I'm going to sort of pan around and so I can you know, center things how I like that way. And so between those three controls, basically, I can get something that I like. And you know, now I can get a, a, nice, you know, a nice render of whatever. The trick here, though, is that the default renderer is EV, which is nice for sort of previewing, but really isn't much as far as uh, actually making things look nice. So what I'm going to do is two things here. Is I'm going to go to the rendering menu, and I'm going to pick Cycles. And that's just a much better renderer. The other thing I'm going to do is just put 10 in here for the max samples. And you'll see why in a second. And then uh, to sort of go back to my layout scene so that I can kind of see where things are, I'm going to do that. And you'll notice now that I'm actually using that, uh, that cycles renderer. Like if I you know, move around and I wait a little while, you can see it resolves and gives me a nice view. And you can see, for example, the lava here is getting reflected into the, uh, in the normals here on the on the normal maps of those objects. So, all right, so I can set up a view. And it also, if, it's, if that's too slow, you can always just switch back to the sort of preview kind of a renderer and do that. Um, but for this scene, it's simple enough that you know, I can do this kind of thing. So let's, you know, let's just, for the fun of it, uh, move over here a little bit, you know, get some nice lava reflections going on. And, uh, and then I can hit F12, and that'll bring up my, my render. And the key thing here is that you'll see samples. Samples four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And when it gets to ten, uh, that is sort of good news on, on two fronts. Is one, it's stopped computing. So it's only done ten passes, which maybe isn't enough, depends on your scene. For this, ten is plenty, I think. Um, and you get these nice reflections and so on. And what those passes are doing is they're just progressively making the image better and better. And once you've got ten passes, you can then say image, and you can save. Um, if it's still clicking off on these passes, it, you, can't, you can't do some image and save. So anyway, that's, that's about all the tricks. I guess one last trick I'll show you is that the, um, the model does come, USDs often come with cameras built into them. And so if you wanted to get to that camera, you can go to camera, and you can go to view, and then camera, and then set active object as camera. And that takes you to the default camera for that. Um, or I could switch back to this one, which I've been manipulating, and get back to the view that I was just at. So anyway, that's about it. Uh, have fun. You know, USD is looking really good. Uh, object, OBJ has gotten a lot better. And uh, it's really great to see these improvements in Blender 3.5. Bye now.